Good day to you, my dear students. Uh, for the next topic for STS, uh, Science, Technology, and Society, we're going to deal now on the about, about biodiversity and healthy society. So before we start, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube page. Let's start biodiversity and healthy society so at the end of this lesson the student should be able to determine the interrelatedness of society environment and health I create a diagram that would show the relatedness of species in forming up a diverse and healthy society without compromising one another and identify everyday tasks and evaluate whether they contribute to the wellness and health of biodiversity and society or not. Okay, so let's define. Uh, biodiversity is defined as the vast variety of life forms in the entire Earth. Its definition is in the structural and functional perspective and not as individual species. So biodiversity is the source of essential goods and ecological services. Um, the next one. A significant decline in biodiversity has direct human impact when ecosystem in its insufficiency can no longer provide the physical as well as social needs of the human beings. So, we as human inhabitants of the ecosystem must preserve and conserve the biodiversity of all creatures. Okay, so here are the threats of biodiversity, um, um, habitat loss and destruction, just like an example of the, the wildlife fire in Australia and in um, Amazon, uh, Amazon rainforest, the alterations of ecosystem composition, the overexploitation, overhunting, overfishing, and overcollecting of species. Um, pollution and contamination as well as global climate change so on the next two slides I will show you the significance of bees to our ecosystem what if the bees will gone extinct and what will happen to humanity on the other side on the other on the next slide the second slide on a kangaroo that has been rescued by this year's 2020 Australian wildfire. Okay. Food is scarce. Money is worthless. Riots are everywhere. The world is in chaos. This isn't our past. It's our future. This, this is what if, and here's what would happen if bees went extinct. Humans and bees have a bit of a love-hate relationship. On one hand, there's this. Not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I love my eyes! My eyes! But then, who doesn't love this? It's a little more complicated than that. Bees do more than just stink to make honey. They happen, they happen to pollinate, to pollinate most, most of the crops, crops we consume, consume. While, contributing while contributing roughly $200 billion, billion dollars to the global, global economy, economy each year. year. And this, this is how we repay them. Global, global warming, warming and increased pesticide use, use in agriculture, agriculture are key reasons why bee populations are in decline. decline. What, does what does this mean for humans? For humans? If we're not, not careful, careful, we'll soon, we'll soon find, find ourselves in a very sticky situation. situation. Within, Within three, three months, months of the last bee dying, Crop yields, crop yields around, around the world, world would plummet. plummet. Your, grocery Your grocery store would lose half its produce, sending, sending the cost, the cost of, fruits of fruits and vegetables, vegetables skyward. skyward. 
But you wouldn't only lose fruits and vegetables. You'd also have to say goodbye to almonds, coconuts, chocolate, and dare I say it, coffee. Without bees, other pollinators like birds, bats, and butterflies would have to pick up the slack. But would they be enough? In an absolute worst case scenario, the extinction of bees would cause food chains to collapse. First, plants start dying off because they're not getting pollinated. And then our favorite herbivores are the next to go. Consider livestock. Almond hulls are considered a high quality and good value feed ingredient for cows and chickens. But, as we mentioned before, almond trees are pollinated by bees. If you think steaks are pricey now, just wait till the bees disappear. A lot of meat and dairy products would go with them, turning familiar favorites like the cheeseburger into a rare, extravagant delicacy. And when you combine severe food shortages and soaring inflation with a growing population of over 7 billion people, well, it's not a very pretty picture. Of course, there are other ways to see this scenario. Corn, wheat, and rice, for example, are wind-pollinated crops, so we'd still have stuff to eat if the bees went extinct. But having lost most fruits and vegetables, be prepared to adopt a bland, less nutritious diet. But it may not have to come to that. In certain parts of China, humans have started to hand pollinate their crops, while drone pollination and even robot pollinators are other avenues to consider. Although these options might promise a normal life without bees, you can imagine the increase in cost. We'd be paying a lot more for something Mother Nature now gives us for free. So let's not turn down a good deal. Since the 1960s, the volume of agricultural production that relies on pollinators has gone up 300%. And all it takes for us to keep this kind of growth sustainable is to treat our planet better. So let's do what we can to keep our world at a normal temperature. Let's see if we can find safer alternatives to pesticides. Let's put our trust in some of the natural world's hardest workers. Because while the little things are often easy to overlook, their impact is hard to ignore. See how the future will unfold next time on What If. Okay, so let's proceed now to the health, biology, and biodiversity. So basic needs of living organisms such as air, water, food, and habitat are provided by its environment. Lack of basic necessities is a significant cause of human mortality. That is why all of these are our basic needs. So environmental hazards increase the risk of cancer, heart disease, asthma and other illnesses so the interrelation between human health and biological diversity is considerable and complex so uh, time will come guys that since that our water is also our basic need um, we pay uh, and our water we pay also for our water bills despite that this water is also our basic need time will come that if our if our environment has been polluted by due to air pollution um, there will time time will come that we need to pay for an oxygen for us to breathe inside inside our homes okay So environment related illnesses. So what are those things are illnesses, no? Um, some human illnesses are found to be related with its environment. Includes uh, Parkinson's disease, 
uh, heart disease, cancer, chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease, uh, COPD, um, asthma, diabetes, obesity, occupational injuries, dysentery, arthritis, malaria, and depression. So these are some of the illnesses that are um, environment related, no? Okay, so many of the issues at the intersection of health and the environment have to do with managing benefits and risks. Just an example, pesticides play an important role in increasing crop yields, but they can also pose hazards to human health and also for the environment as well. On the other hand, energy production and the and use help sustain human life but it can also pose hazards to human health and in the, and the environment most especially that our energy that our electricity uh, the source of electricity is from the coal um, uh, coal plants that releases tremendous amount of carbon dioxide into our atmosphere that would also cause global warming so what happened to the typhoons that recently struck our country? Um, Typhoon Rolly and Typhoon Ulysses. So these are um, the examples of the impact of the releasing of the carbon dioxide into our atmosphere that would also give an impact to our um, atmosphere, for example, for, for uh, weather conditions as well. No? another thing that is why um, I am also an advocate of renewable energy source it's because this energy source are um, the energy source such as hydroelectric power plants wind uh, wind energy energy coming from the wind or solar panels these are the type of energy source that that is also an alternative from the use of uh, coal mining plants. Why? It's because these are the these are the renewable energy sources are those sources that could give us um, that could help benefit to our environment. Um, the next one. So the increasing taxes on fossil fuels would also encourage greater fuel efficiency and lower carbon dioxide emissions but it could also increase the price of transportation and also it would also change or it could also affect our economy as well <laughs> so these are the things that could that we have to consider so managing benefits and risk also raises social justice concerns like people with lower socioeconomic status have greater exposure to certain harmful environmental conditions. Okay, how COVID-19 pandemic has changed our environment. So you can see here in the, the picture in the upper picture that is the picture of Metro Manila with um, with Pasig River no so it's highly uh, uh, smog so as you can see here the smog that was caused by the carbon dioxide emissions from the vehicles but on the lower the lower picture that was the picture that was taken during the COVID-19 pandemic and due to the lockdown and all the transportation um, vehicles are being put to hold you can see how tremendous uh, the environment has changed no, during the COVID-19 pandemic so in the next slide I will show you other examples of those pictures on how the pandemic has also changed our environment
Okay, so this first picture is a Metro Manila skyline during the new year. Okay, the skyline during new year. And so the pollutants is came from the firecrackers and also from the vehicles as well. This is also another skyline, Manila Metro Manila skyline due to the pollutants from vehicles like this one. Okay, and lastly, the Metro Manila skyline during the COVID-19 pandemic. So what does it imply here? I do not mean that I'm in favor for the pandemic. But actually, um, what I'm trying to uh, to elaborate here is that the, because of the lockdown, because of people are just only staying at homes, there's a change. There's a drastic change in our environment. Um, yeah, we, we love to... Uh, we love to have this kind of environment wherein we all uh, all of us um, enjoy the clean air but on the other hand it also pose um, hazard uh, health hazard concerns is because COVID-19 uh, many people have died due to the COVID-19 and COVID-19 until today is a very serious threat to our threat to our social health so that is why this is also a part of our lesson on biodiversity and healthy society. Okay. So discussion points for our next assignment. Do you think that Earth can exist without human beings taking care of it? Or biodiversity also needs human beings for it to be in a continuous growing process. Okay, um, number two. What are the small ways that you think would promote safekeeping our biodiversity? Number three. What do you think are the common human activities that can harm biodiversity? And lastly, number four. What would be the consequences if these human activities are stopped and prohibited? So this will be your our discussion points to be answered in your on your assignment. Okay, so for the lesson summary, we have to consider the entire earth as a single unit, a loss of a single cell species or a family of wild grass can have an adverse effects on the entire biosphere. Biodiversity loss will have a great negative effect especially to us humans. So next one is that we have to recognize the value of organisms with which we share the planet. The best example is uh, a while ago is the bees, how bees could give an impact to our health to our food supply as well as to our economy lastly number four a mitigating plan and a workable plan of action should be studied in order to not compromise biodiversity while at the same time promote good health among the society Okay, so thank you very much for watching and listening. Um, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe my YouTube page for more videos. So once again, I'm Sean Sevier Alquilita, now signing off.